Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about triggers, but before we get into it, I want to note that this is an advanced Postgres guide, so there's a little bit of a caveat here that I'm expecting you to have some solid exposure to Postgres to jump in. If you've never used Postgres or haven't done much SQL in the past, I have a 45 minute video overlaying all the basics that you need to know. It's a good thing to watch and maybe get a little practice before you jump into this video. I'll have a card here for you to click on if you want to jump over it and do that. So the first question, what, what's a Postgres trigger? Well, a Postgres trigger is simply a way for us to tell our Postgres database to respond to some operation on a table. It's that simple. And I'll dive into an example. So let's talk through an example of where a trigger could be useful. So on the left here, I have a ERD, a diagram of a database that I already have set up. And I want to note, I built this out using a tool called DataGrip. It lets us generate automated diagrams based off of our database schema. It's awesome. It's a bit more of an advanced tool than the one I used last video, which was Postico. And I'm still going to be using Postico in this video to edit my queries because I think the interface is a little bit more friendly to people who are newer. With that said, let's walk through an example here. So the schema that I have outlined here is for an application, albeit a very simple one, um, that would allow a user to purchase items, right? It's a simple store-based schema. So what we have is we've got a user, they've got a username, password, and an address. We've got a shop item, which is just really simple. It's a name and a price and cents. And just a quick note here, maybe a, a quick little nugget for your learning. Really, really frequently, you're going to be storing anything monetary in sense in the database. And the reason is a lot of um, pre-built technologies like Stripe are just expecting it to be in that format and also makes doing calculations a lot easier and simpler. So you're going to see it really consistently that prices are stored in sense. So that's what I have here, shop item stored in sense. So we've got our shop item and we've got our user. Then we have a cart. So as the user is going through the app, they may add things in or out of the cart, and we're going to add that to the database. And then we've got this invoice here. So what I want, and this is just one way to build something like this, right? Maybe it's not perfect, but it was just for the sake of an example. When an invoice record gets inserted, right? I don't want to calculate this total in cents myself. What I want to do is on insert of an invoice, all I want to include is the user ID. And then I want the database itself to calculate and populate this total in cents column. So if a user has added two items, they've added one worth $5 and then another one worth 10, I want to be able to insert an invoice record that will automatically set the price in cents to $15, which would be 1500 it's important that you understand the power of that. This total in cents, as long as we get the trigger correct, it will never be wrong, which is a huge value add, right? We no longer need to worry about someone making a small change in a future code commit that will break this. The database will never lie. This total in cents is always gonna be correct. Hello, I've moved to the bottom right. I hope that wasn't too jarring. Let's jump in and look at a code example for creating a trigger to make that invoicing logic work. So what I do here is the first 13 lines, I create the function itself. So this is just a Postgres function, um, but it's a special kind because we're returning a trigger. So we start create a replace function, and this is just something I like to do, the or replace as well as the drop trigger if exists, are great for debugging as you're continuing to work on your trigger and you might you know, make it and then remake it, it allows it so it will just remake itself. Every time I run this, you know, it will clear out what was there before and we won't run into issues, you know, where the, the Postgres database tells us that that trigger already exists. So we get create, create a replace function, set invoice total. We're telling it that it returns a trigger and we're using PLPG SQL as our language. Next up, we, you know, this is just the syntax. We open up the transaction and we declare this total variable. And if you remember back to our schema, how we have it set up is we've got a cart and then that cart has shop items in it and the cart itself has a user ID. So what we're doing with this trigger is this trigger is running on insert for every single invoice row. 
So what that means uh, is that we get access to this keyword called new. And what new is, what you can think of that as, is it's just that new row that's been inserted and triggered this function to be ran, right? So if I insert a new row into invoice and I give it the user ID three, then new user ID will be three, okay? So because of that new variable and because we are creating a trigger for the invoice table here, we have all the stuff we need. We declare our total and then we go ahead and we sum up all of the price and cents from the cart. Then we join that on the shop item table so that we can get the shop item price. Uh, and what I'm doing here is aliasing. So I'm saying from cart C, join the shop item SI, join where the shop item ID is the cart's shop item ID. And then I sum up all of the price and cents and I make sure to do that where the cart is for the user that we're inserting an invoice for, right? So where the cart user ID is the new user ID. And I select that sum into that total variable that we have declared up here. So this total should be the sum of all of the prices for each item in that user's cart. Then we go ahead and we assign this row. So the actual record that we're inserting into the invoice table, we assign its total in cents to be the total from that variable. Then we make sure we return new. If we don't do this, it will fail. It will try to insert null values for everything because remember this trigger allows us to modify what we're inserting into the table. So if we return nothing, it's not gonna get anything out. Next, again, this is just to clear out the trigger if it already existed, if you're debugging. Um, and in, you know, in prod code, or if you, once you're happy with the trigger, you can remove this. Next, we create the trigger itself. So this is telling Postgres when to run set invoice total. So create trigger, set invoice total trigger, name has to be unique, before insert on invoice, for each row, so every single row we insert, execute this function. We could also do an after insert, but we want this to be correct the second the record gets in there. If there's an after insert, you know, if you were to read it the millisecond it gets in there, then total would be null. So we're doing a before insert here. We can go ahead and run this. And it, it, it appears to work completely fine. We can test it. But before we do that, I want to note something interesting. That just something I forgot to do. So we'll do a little bit of live coding here. Uh, I want to make sure that once this is done, we delete all of the cart items. So that the user could add more things to the cart. So we can do that. We can say delete from cart where uh, cart user ID equals new dot user ID. So that will clear the cart, right? So without that, the user would maybe add something else to the cart. And then for some reason they would have, you know, an additional, they would have all their old items still. It would probably be a bad user experience. So we'll make sure we clear the cart as well. So I'll select all and I'll execute selection, which is behind my camera, by the way, I'm clicking a button over here uh, and that still works fine. Awesome, let's test it out. So in order to test it out, let's look at our database again and let's see what we have. So what we've got here is we've got one user in here, user ID one. We've got two shop items. We're selling a rubber duck for $3.50 and we're selling AirPods for $200. And then we have a cart for that first user. It appears they've added two of shop item one, which is rubber duck. So they have two ducks and one AirPods. So the total should be $207 if our trigger works correctly. Let's go ahead and test it out. So we should be able to now insert into invoice. We're only inserting the user ID and the value is gonna be one. Again, we're only inserting the user ID because we want the trigger to handle this total incense column for us. Um, I can go ahead and just highlight this and post the code just lets me execute the selection so it won't remake the trigger, which is nice. And I'll go and click the button over here and execute. We notice it inserted. And let's check. Let's see if it worked. We'll come to the invoice table and we'll refresh up here. And sure enough, we get an invoice record in that has this total in cents of $207. It looks like our trigger worked. 
Hey, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this quick little trigger tutorial. I've got more videos coming soon, so please consider liking and subscribing so that they show up in your home feed in the future.